You know, I didn't see this movie when I was a kid, but watching it back as an adult, it is a crazy movie with weird pink elephants and Dumbo accidentally getting drunk and waking up in a tree. It's a fascinating film, really. What did you think of this movie, and are you excited for the new one? Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my theological analysis for Dumbo, the 1941 animated movie. You know, this movie was seriously just one hour long, but because of how incredibly weird this movie was, how dark and depressing it was in some places, how freakish, it's like, it just felt so much longer. But really, it's only an hour, it goes through the stuff pretty quick, and at least it ends happy. It just, I just finished watching it and I'm kind of flabbergasted. I'm like, what are they gonna do in this new movie? I don't know, but let's dig deep into this animated film. Just because he's got those big ears, they call him a freak. The laughing stock of the circus. I feel like this entire animated movie is a perfect illustration of something the Bible says. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So you have these storks delivering babies to all the animals in the circus and finally the mother elephant gets her baby named Jumbo Jr. Yes, it was not supposed to be Dumbo. His name was Jumbo. But you see, the moment she unfolded the little cloth and those giant ears flopped out, the mother didn't care. She loved her child. But the other elephants, they were prideful. And they were gossips and backbiters and busybodies. Is it possible? Isn't there some mistake? Just look at those. The E-A-R-S. And so they see the giant ears on little Jumbo and they just gossip like crazy about it right there in the presence of the mother and in the presence of the baby. They're just happy to have something else to talk bad about, not to love it unconditionally. They're excited how they can gossip now. And so the mother defends the baby from the family and kind of hides the baby, but the, the, these like supposed ants, the supposed family of Jumbo give him the name Dumbo to make fun of him. Who cares about her precious little Jumbo? Jumbo? You mean Dumbo? So like right from birth, basically, he's being made fun of because of his gigantor ears. So this feature to them that is weak and foolish, they are having a great time gossiping about it. Elephants are supposed to be this elegant and proud race. Don't forget that we elephants have always walked with dignity. His disgrace is our own shame. And so this little freak here kind of puts a kink in that, and so they're having fun gossiping about it and making fun of this baby from the beginning. The circus has no idea what to do with this little kid who keeps tripping over his ears. So what do they do? They just kind of put him out to be seen by everybody so everybody can laugh at the size of his ears. And then when the mother sees these snot-nosed brat children who think they have everything together in their lives and everything must be so good, so they are literally jumping over the fence, over the boundaries to go into the elephant pen so when little Jumbo Dumbo is hiding behind his mother, they're pulling him out so they can see his ears and make fun of his ears. Of course, the loving mother is gonna get defensive and what's her reward for protecting her child and protecting her child's self-esteem? It's just, it's so dark and twisted and depressing. And then his ants, it's the only way I know how to describe them, but the rest of these elephants that are supposed to be his family, do they reach down and understand his pain? Do they look at him and go, oh, poor baby separated from his mother? No, they love gossiping about the mother and where she went crazy. Have I got a trunk full of dirt? Well, darling, go on, go on. I mean, just so excited to have something to gossip. And then when little baby Dumbo wants to come and eat from the same straw that they're eating from, they have to, you know, they even say it. We're going to pretend we don't see him. And they give him the cold shoulder. So this little weak, foolish thing is, is putting a kink in how elephants should be so dignified and carry themselves so well. What was awesome is it took a little mouse. And I looked this up online. I guess his name is Timothy Q. Mouse. This little mouse takes it upon himself 
to be Dumbo's friend and does his best to help out Dumbo. So Timothy Q. Mouse, the only friend of Dumbo, tries to do him good and get him a gig that'll make him popular, except Dumbo trips over his own ears and almost destroys the circus. So they shame him further by making him a clown. They put him in a fiery building and he's supposed to jump out and he's really actually sweating. So it's real fire, he's in real danger. He goes to jump out of this building to land on the thing they're trying to catch him with and he breaks through and lands in what I can only assume is a pie. And it's all just one great big huge joke to shame him for his foolish ears. Now this is where it gets weird, where the clowns decide they wanna build a bigger building for him to jump from and they drop their bottle of alcohol in the water and Dumbo drinks the water and gets drunk. The mouse drinks the water and gets drunk. Yeah, Dumbo is a kid and he's drunk. And so mouse and kid have a weird freakish dream about pink dancing elephants and they wake up in a tree. It's when Dumbo is drunk and he doesn't remember it that he flies into a tree. So it's through Dumbo getting drunk that we learn he can fly. Do you think that'll be in the 2019 movie? But a drunk Dumbo learns that he can fly, but now he's got to figure out how is he going to fly sober now that he's conscious. How do you consciously fly when he only subconsciously flew? Well, those crows give him a feather and they say it's a psychological thing. Tell him it's a magic feather. And so he believes by holding the feather he can fly, so he flies. But here's the big thing that we learn. This asset, his ears, that everybody is making fun of, that they call the most foolish thing. What was called the most foolish thing was this elephant's greatest strength. Turns out that he could fly, and once he believed that he could fly, he flew like a bird. And then the clowns, the very thing meant to humiliate him, when he's at the very top of that super tall building they built for him, and it's really on fire, and he jumps out and he loses the feather, his mouse friend is there to tell him, look, there was no such thing as a magic feather. Just believe, man, just fly, just fly. And he flaps his ears, and he flies. And it's an awesome scene and it's probably my favorite in this twisted, weird, animated movie because the very thing that everybody shamed him for and separated, from, separated him from his mom for, the very thing that he probably looked at in his life as a curse and a scourge became the very gift that calls him to excel above everybody else. The very things that held you down are gonna carry you up and up and up! All of those elephants that should have been his family and made fun of his ears their wisdom was shamed by the gift that those ears really were. And so finally this movie gets to end on a happy note because the very thing that everybody was confused about, made fun of him for, and thought was so foolish was the very strength that caused him to fly and to excel. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So that's what I see in the 1941 Dumbo. What did you think of this movie? And are you excited for the new one coming out? Let's talk in the comments while you're there. Hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified for my very next theological analysis, movie review, ranking video, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.